Cairo 7 uncovers dozens of violent assaults on board Metro buses, most often directed at drivers. They spit on us, they, they kick us, they punch us. Tonight, three years after King County promised to increase safety by investing millions in onboard surveillance, only Cairo 7 has visual evidence of how dangerous those buses still are. Hello, I'm Monique Minglovin. 91% of coaches are now outfitted with cameras. That is, surveillance images clearly show their presence does not guarantee a safe ride. So tonight, Cairo 7 wants to know what King County will do now to improve safety. And drivers asked Amy Clancy to get those answers. Metro surveillance videos are a matter of public record. So we now have the ability to see whether cameras are making King County buses more safe. We filed a public disclosure request back in December. December, and the dozens of videos we receive show an alarming amount of violence in less than two years. Steve Boots didn't know he'd have to fight for his life April 7th, 2018. Are you really gonna stand here? Like but that was the day a bus passenger armed with a knife attacked the 10 year Metro driver. So I had no idea this woman was coming out with a knife. I just tried to keep my feet in front of her so she didn't have a chance to cut my arteries. Do you think she was trying to kill you? That was my impression at the time. Chris Johnson knows the feeling. I've had a gun pointed at me, the trigger pulled several times. I've had a knife held to my neck. Johnson, who drove a bus for 10 years, no longer does. Boots, however, still works for Metro as an electrician, but won't ever get behind the wheel of a King County bus again because of the time he was nearly stabbed. Oh, really? And because of other incidents revealed in videos obtained by Cairo 7 that clearly show how drivers are verbally harassed, spat at, assaulted. And both Boots and Johnson are frustrated by what they perceive as a lack of consequences for violence against drivers. Even though it's clearly posted on board buses that any act of violence against a bus driver is a felony. The King County prosecutor elected not to pursue this as a felony, knocked it down to a gross misdemeanor and gave her counseling. How is this not assault with a deadly weapon? That was the knife, man. You cut her loose. What happens to the next person? What if they're not as lucky as I was? Since being released from jail and order to counseling, Boots' attacker was arrested again this past July for possessing a stolen firearm and again released from jail. Well, I was scared. Johnson believes the man who held a knife to his throat also got off easy. He got seven months for that. He should have gotten years because I still have nightmares from it. Get away from me, man. According to King County records, in the past 10 years, nearly 230 assault related injury claims have been filed against Metro by drivers, leading to taxpayer funded payouts of more than $2.5 million. It happens regularly. Ken Price is president of King County Metro Drivers Union, ATU 587. Once a week at least, maybe daily, someone is assaulted. Um, our drivers tend to to sometimes not even report it because it's it's pretty common. The videos received by Cairo 7 represent only reported assaults. The library. I'm gonna blow the her up. Including this incident from June of this year. The library. A passenger threatened to blow up a metro coach in downtown Seattle and shoot its driver. You want to die? I got gun on me right now. The suspect was arrested, charged with harassment, but was released from jail. I've had multiple gun incidences on my bus. And it doesn't surprise Price at all that the suspect in this case is identified in police documents as homeless. You can be a rolling hotel out there. According to the driver's union president, there's been a noticeable uptick in homeless, substance abusing, and mentally ill passengers on board Metro buses in recent years. Riders have noticed too. Open alcohol use, things like that, drug use. Well, I have had a friend who had an experience where a gun was pulled by um, a mentally ill person on the bus. It's just the drunk ones, you know, and the real, like, mentally ill ones that are dangerous. But it's very uncomfortable because I'm having to pay $2.75 to get on this E line, and then they don't pay anything, they bring the crime.
and then no one does anything about it at all. Price and Boots say King County won't let drivers demand payment and claim the current violence God damn it. Get out of here. Get out. is the result. A great many people don't pay. I'll say my thumbnail estimation is fully half of the passengers that I would pick up during a date didn't pay. If you have an altercation with somebody over a fare dispute, you're subject to termination. That's policy. There are catering to the homeless and and the substance abuse folks out there and I need you out. We're having to deal with it with no training to deal with substance abuse. Price would like to see his drivers trained not only how to deal with the mentally ill and substance abusers, but also in de-escalation techniques. He also wants each metro bus installed with a driver's shield like those Pierce Transit is currently adding. King County has been exploring the idea for 10 years, but Terry White, Metro's deputy general manager, said none of the shield options tested so far have been good enough. We don't want to just put something in, find out we did the wrong thing, and now we've we've costed the system, and we got to pull it out. White told Cairo 7, even though ridership and miles traveled are up, assaults on drivers are actually down. 82 last year, down from 181 assaults in 2008. What's different now? Those attacks are captured on camera. Is Metro considering any changes because of what you've seen in those videos? So on a regular basis, uh, we, even though we're proud of our safety record, that's, that's, we're not resting on that. We're always constantly looking to improve our system safety. But not soon enough for Steve Boots, who believes the public has a right to see what some metro drivers and passengers experience. I wouldn't have my loved ones riding in that environment. You. It's not safe. The union president and both drivers told me they can be fired for leaving their seats, even to fend off an attack. So I asked Terry White about that, and he said no. If a driver has to leave his or her seat in self-defense, they will not be fired. Seattle was recently named the country's best city for public transportation. But many King County Metro passengers are worried about this. Disturbing and random assaults on board Metro buses captured on surveillance camera. As we just revealed in our exclusive investigation, much of the violence has been directed at drivers. But Cairo 7's Amy Clancy has also uncovered surveillance video that shows passengers as well are being targeted. As part of a years-long, nearly $3 million investment to improve safety, cameras have been installed on 91% of all Metro buses. However, video we received after filing a public disclosure request shows those cameras are not preventing violent attacks. Just last month, a man boarding an E-Line bus on Aurora Avenue North in Seattle was suddenly oh. shot in the face with a flare gun. Oh my God. This victim repeatedly punched on board a busy Metro coach during the afternoon rush near Pioneer Square, needed surgery to save his eye. Yeah, he's he's security. The violent attack on a passenger was one of more than 30 disturbing incidents recorded on Metro surveillance cameras in the past two years that include assaults, hey, harassment, Shut up. Shut up. gun violence, Groping, indecent exposure, and masturbation. Jennifer, who asked Cairo 7 not to reveal her last name, has been a twice daily Metro bus commuter for nearly 30 years and has witnessed multiple examples of danger on board. It's making me think of getting a car. Other regular bus riders are thinking the same thing. I'm going to go to job, get me a car. If you take your life in your own hands to go out on these buses. That proved true in August 2018. Two passengers argued on board Metro Route 128 on 35th Avenue Southwest. When the bus stopped, both got off and one opened fire. Oh my goodness. You just shoot them all. Killing the other. 
The suspect got away and has never been identified, according to the King County Sheriff's Office. Give me an ambulance and the police. Uh, someone just got shot. Ken Price, president of King County Metro Drivers Union ATU 587, said he saw many passengers armed with guns during his decades as a driver. It's that quick rush of adrenaline that makes you realize that it could have been you or somebody could have lost their life. And Price believes King County could do more to protect passengers and drivers. We need more police presence on our bus. Many riders agree. More police presence. Security that was just riding the bus at all times, especially on the more vulnerable route. Cairo 7 took those concerns straight to King County Metro headquarters, where Deputy General Manager Terry White said more transit officers will most likely be added. As the system grows, there's a reason why we were voted top system in the nation, but we're never going to rest on our laurels. We're going to continue to work the system and, and try to make it better than it is. Cairo 7 has also learned many riders believe bus drivers will intervene to protect them. I also know that, you know, you can always yell out for the driver that, you know, there's unsafe things that are happening. The bus drivers have, in my experience, always been really well trained to look after passenger safety first. But drivers are not responsible for passenger safety beyond getting them from point A to point B. Oh, no, we have transit police. We don't need our operators becoming transit police. We have supervisors to help with de-escalation. De but they are not supposed to intervene in passenger safety in any way. They're supposed to call for support. They should call for support. We have two uh, male flight on the back of the bus. However, Metro has accepted some responsibility for drivers who fail to intervene on behalf of passengers. In the past 10 years, King County has paid out $400,000 to settle claims filed by passengers injured during assaults on board Metro. I would never take that risk again. And former driver Steve Boots is frustrated by the hands-off policy when it comes to passenger safety. If you step out of your seat, your subject determination. Do you think most passengers know that you are prevented by policy from coming to their aid? Uh, they are under the perception that we should be rendering assistance and they require they ask us quite often. But you're not allowed to. We're not allowed to. Disturbing news for E-line passenger Sean Gaston. Then whose job is it? What are we all just supposed to turn a blind eye and say, well, it's no one's job on this bus? Apparently, it is no one's job on the bus. Metro's Terry White told me when passengers are threatened, drivers should call for a supervisor and police support. Amy Clancy, Cairo 7 News. Next on Cairo 7 Investigates, CBD infused products are so popular these days, but how do you know if they're delivering what they promise? Jesse Jones does the research and puts some goods to the test. Plus, saying goodbye to tardy school buses. Last year, Seattle students were stranded and parents frustrated by bus shortages. How new technology could be the solution to those long waits.
Since it's become legal, CBD infused items are everywhere. But do these products live up to the promise? Cairo 7's Jesse Jones went shopping in stores all over the Seattle area and took the items to a lab to find out. Lisa Tompkins is riding the wave of CBD's popularity with her store, Bright Day CBD, in Tacoma. I love it. I, people come in. Every day, we're educating people. She sells scores of products that contain CBD, a molecule that comes from hemp that many say helps heal those with ailments from anxiety to arthritis. And it is, it's very rewarding. It's very gratifying to see people's lives changed. But CBD is a billion dollar industry which creates its own pain for consumers. I've had people say, oh, I, I signed up, I got it for free on the internet. You get what you pay for. But what about the CBD products being sold on store shelves in the Seattle area? I went to grocery and drug stores, small shops, and big box stores buying CBD products for women, men, and their best friend. The goal? See if these products' dosing promises are real or just blowing smoke. We have a huge market for it now. We brought the items to Ed Strimlo. Chief Operating Officer with Analytical 360. The lab is based in Yakima. But it's at the center of CBD testing. We see a huge influx of samples coming in from all over the world. There were items that actually over delivered, having more CBD than advertised. This Vital Body CBD soak for baths advertised 15 milligrams of CBD. But according to lab results, actually has 25. If they told people there's 25 milligrams, it may be actually more appealing to the consumer. Willie's Remedy Coffee promises 113 milligrams. However, it tested at 141. At Bed Bath & Beyond, we found Dog Whisperer CBD oil. It's expensive at more than 30 bucks, and its CBD levels were on target. 250 milligrams promised, 256 delivered. So they're almost dead on. They're they're, um, they're doing a pretty good job. For the last two in the overgroup, there's the Medterra CBD Rapid Cooling Cream that listed 250 milligrams and came in at 268. And the Veritas Farms Lip Balm advertised 25 but tested at 30. It also had one milligram of THC. That's the stuff that gets people high. Lisa says that's normal for what's called full spectrum CBD. Cannabinoids, flavonoids, terpenes, vitamins, minerals, everything is in full spectrum, working together to create what's called the entourage effect. That's the best effect that you can get from the product. The lip balm is well under the legal limit of three tenths of a percent of THC. But you don't get high off that. You do not. It's, there's no intoxicating effect or high off of that. The other full spectrum product we bought was okay. CBD Infusions Organic Gummy Bears. It had 0.04% of THC, also perfectly legal. There are also two other types of CBD. There's broad spectrum. Broad spectrum is full spectrum minus the THC. And there's CBD isolate, which also has zero THC. Sprig CBD infused sparkling citrus soda advertises 20 milligrams of isolate. Test results reveal 6.9. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt and saying that they put 20 milligrams in here and it's probably all sticking to the aluminum inside the can. Which could be the case for CBD Living Water, which promised 10 milligrams of CBD but had just two in the test. Ed says the oils used for CBD could attach to the container. Oil and water. It's oil and water. Oil and water don't mix well. So after testing all of these products, our scientist is actually encouraged by what he's seen. Overall, pretty good with a lot of the products. And then, you know, we've got a couple that need work. Bottom line, if you're looking for CBD products, check their websites for third-party lab tests and find a business you can trust. I just say be careful. Do your homework. Make sure they have a certificate of analysis from a reputable company. Uh, just, just be careful. In response to our report, Sprig CEO and co-founder Michael Lewis said Sprig is committed to product quality and stringent control standards. The company is working with multiple labs to help refine 
the process to ensure that each can of Sprig is as advertised. Sprig also sent us test results showing its product was well over the 20 milligrams listed on the label. CBD Living Water says third-party labs, including the one we used, are unable to reverse the process it uses to extract the 10 milligrams of CBD in the product. Their statement says CBD Living Water has worked for five years with their in-house scientists to create a perfect, clear, odorless, and tasteless CBD water. What CBD Living aims to achieve are quality products that are backed up by scientific data. Your kids are heading back to school. But after all the bus delays last fall... We're waiting at the bus stop. It's kind of just a waste of time. We're asking how things will be different this year. Only Cairo 7 reveals a brand new system for tracking your child's bus. The Seattle School District is rolling out a new app that parents can use to track buses. And our Lindsay Sheldon found other changes are already in the works to make sure those buses arrive on time. We'll go ahead and go. It's back to school time in the Seattle School District. But will your kids get there on time? I don't want to miss school because I really like school. Mario Shikawa Clay faced that possibility a lot last year. Her dad, Kevin, says her bus rarely arrived on schedule at her bus stop. As soon as we showed up, we'd get a text saying that the bus was running late. Like um, an hour late. Sometimes up to an hour or more, sometimes 90 minutes late. 712 is 15 minutes down due to traffic. They were late all over the city. The bus company, First Student, admitted it was short dozens of drivers, and the numbers tell the story. In September and October of 2017, you can see there were 254 and 390 incidents, like routes without drivers or delays longer than 15 minutes. Now, compare that to last year, when parents experienced over 1,000 incidents in September and more than 1,200 in October. That's a lot. It's over a thousand. Wow. Do these numbers surprise you? You know, I hope that it wasn't widespread. But first student says they're making big changes to make this year different. Our biggest focus this summer has been recruiting. Manager Donna Sansaterra says that includes paying for applicants' commercial learner's permit and the CDL test. Look out. Retention bonuses. And employee appreciation events to encourage drivers to stay. They're also adding these foam cars to help new drivers practice navigating narrow Seattle streets. But it can be very challenging. Sansoterra says they need 396 drivers to cover all routes and have enough backup drivers. We are very close to getting there. How close? Uh, we are probably at about the 93% to our goal. So we have enough to cover all of our routes. We are still looking to build our standby ratio. It's nice to have enough drivers now. It's a relief for bus drivers like Easter Miller. We rode along with him as he did a dry run of his route. It was kind of embarrassing having the kids wait out there for a whole hour sometimes without a bus coming to pick them up. Parents can set their phone up for alerts and notifications. The changes extend to new technology. Cairo 7 discovered the company is also rolling out a new app, allowing parents to track their child's bus and plan accordingly. It's called First View, and it can tell you if the bus is running on time, any delays, and just how far away it is. This is how it works. We showed Kevin and Mari. I think it's really cool that we finally get an app. An app that hopefully means they're not waiting so long. We just hope it goes smoothly. You know, if we can count on the times and when it's going to be there, it would be a really nice change. We also found out the school district is spending up to $1.8 million for 17 buses from Durham School Services for additional transportation. As for the First View app, the school district tells me that they hope to roll it out into as many schools as possible sometime this fall. We'll keep you posted. Reporting in Seattle, I'm Lindsay Sheldon, Cairo 7 News. Thank you for watching this episode of Cairo 7 Investigates. Now, if you want to learn more about any of the stories you saw today, just head to Cairo7.com or download the Cairo 7 app on your smart TV for more exclusive Cairo 7 content. I'm Monique Minglavin. Have a great day.